What's up, internet? A disclaimer. Please don't react to the title. I am with you, US of A. I come in peace. Sorry about that. That was absolutely necessary because the last time I dared to compare Europe to US of A, I nearly got killed in the comment section because I happen to live in LA. Everything's better in LA. Says who? People in LA. Yeah, didn't you never not notice that people from up here go down to LA and then they come back up here calling it LA. So now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the video. Today we're talking about things that Europeans don't understand about America. First thing we're gonna look into the obvious one and that is taxes. You see a price in a store, but that's not the end. No, no. You have to keep in mind that that is without taxes. For example, I only had $10 to my name and I needed to buy a few things to survive and I calculated down to a cent and then I get to the register. They say $12.55 and I'm like, but how? I don't need, you know, milk, it's fine. I'll just put water in my cereal. That's absolutely okay. I also want to mention something that I've noticed. The amount of ads for pharmaceuticals there are and the way they are created. Taking this pill could result in termination of life. Allergic reactions such as shortness of breath or swelling of your tongue or throat may occur and may be fatal. Some people have had changes in behavior, hostility, agitation, depressed mood. Patients also reported trouble sleeping and vivid, unusual or strange dreams. So next thing that confuses the hell out of Europeans is the measurements. For example, when it comes to baking, everything is in cups and spoons. And my dumbass, the first time I baked something based on American recipe, I thought in my brain, because I didn't Google it, I was just like, I get this, you know, that cups are cups, as in mugs. And spoons are a large tablespoon will be fine. So when I actually prepared something, not only it was not good, it was terrible. Another cultural shock or whatever you want to call it is the food. Uh, I mean, what the hell is this or is this? Excuse me, there is cheese coming out of this tin can. What? And also the combinations of foods like sweet potatoes and toasted marshmallows. Waffles and fried chicken. I, I, I don't... I, I also have to mention the way Amazon delivers packages. So when you look at Amazon.com, they say, if no one is at the address when delivery is attempted, we will leave the package in a secure location. To avoid disturbing you, our drivers will knock on the door, ring the doorbell, or directly contact you for delivery. That is not true, Amazon. You lie. Have you ever seen an Amazon delivery? These guys literally either just throw the package and then kick the door and run away. They never, ever, ever attempt to deliver the package to your hands at all, ever. They just leave it there. Do you know how many times I have had my shit stolen? But for example, in Slovenia and other parts of Europe, they call you on the phone and if you don't answer, they leave a paper slip where it says where you can pick up your package. Moving on. Next one is the obvious one the drinking age. You can't go and die for your country as long as you don't buy beer. Okay, this one is also from a personal anecdote and I'm pretty sure that it's accurate. Renting out places in the States is nearly impossible. If you don't have a good credit score or if you're not from there, usually there's an application fee for every apartment that you apply for. And then you need to pass the background check, the credit check. If you don't have a good credit score, you need somebody to vouch for you. You need a sample of your urine and blood and I don't know, a kidney. Especially in Slovenia, it's I'm not gonna say it's super easy, but well, yeah, it's actually super easy. All you need is you need to be employed. Done. Congratulations, you have a place to live. Next one is uh, the way waitressing works over there. The policy is that you tip 20% because 
Some servers don't get paid more than $2 per hour. For example, in Slovenia, waiters and servers, they are paid an hourly wage. So tipping is usually just, you know, if the service is really good. And also I have noticed something that they do, they automatically add 20% to the, your check. I know there's like a few bars that I used to go to regularly and they do that. So at some point I noticed that I've been tipping 40%. That happens if you buy people rounds, you know, at the end, you know, the bill is gonna be high. So you're not like exactly looking at the bill. Oh, okay, so we, we had six beers, right? That is correct. You know, you just sign the thing and then you're out of there. But since I've been in the States for so long, I got used to tipping like an insane person. And then I come to Slovenia, I go to like a small bar and I would tip still 20% and the waitress would be like, well, no, this is your change. And I'm like, no, you can keep it. And she'd be like, no, but like, this is, a, this is yours. And I'm like, no, no, this is your tip. Please have it. And she'd be like, thank you. One thing that I have personally also noticed is every bad thing that happens or every complaint that I have, there will be numerous people just telling me, welcome to America. It doesn't matter what happens. I could, you know, end up getting robbed. I could lose an earring, discover an energetic field that sends me into another orbit to circle around Mars and people will be like, oh, well, welcome to America. As if like nothing bad ever happens outside of America. Next thing that Europeans absolutely do not understand, myself included, is paying for your laundry. The amount of times I ran out of quarters, one quarter to be exact, because in Europe, pretty much everybody, 99% of the apartments houses, they have their own washing machine. Rarely anybody uses a dryer, as far as I know. Then obviously I need to mention the cost of medical aid, a huge difference in medical bills in general, like staying in hospital, visits to the doctors. There are various reasons for that. I am fully aware of that. Here I must also include an anecdote. I remember I had to get an x-ray when I fractured my ribs. Despite the fact that I paid $230 already, they sent me a bill for another 300, saying that my x-ray scan was not justified. Once I went to the doctor, they didn't check my blood. They didn't do any tests. They just asked me, where does it hurt? How long has it been hurting? Are you throwing up? And are you allergic to anything? And then they prescribed me something. It didn't help at all. And then I went back two weeks later and they were like, oh, okay. So I think what the problem is, is something different than we thought. Uh, so we probably gave you the wrong thing. So we're gonna need to give you something a little bit stronger this time. Uh, it will make you vomit for the first three days, but don't worry, then the vomiting stops. I'm just like... You prescribed me the wrong thing? What's the with What's the with Next, I want to look into the one that pretty much everybody will agree on, I think, hopefully, we'll see. And that is traffic and driving is a lot different in America than it is in Europe. The key difference here is turning on red light. So United States allowed right turns on red since 1980 and it's pretty much the same in all the states. For example, in Poland, right turns on red are permitted, but only if an additional green arrow light is present and lit. Then in Netherlands, bicycles are occasionally allowed to turn on red. In France, a right turn on red without stopping is allowed when a separate arrow-shaped amber light flashes. So the key thing here is that something else must be present before you turn on red. Another major difference in America is that every lane is a fast lane. <laughs> in Slovenia and other countries in Europe, highways are a little different. They are a lot smaller. The protocol usually is if you want to pass somebody, you absolutely must pass them on the left lane. It is strictly prohibited to pass them on the right lane. And usually the, the third one, the third lane is for slower vehicles. But in America, 
People just drive everywhere. They pass you on the left, they pass you on the right, they pass you through your rooftop, it doesn't matter. And especially if you're like on a big highway, like in LA. 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 Thank you. LA. You nearly get a heart attack every time you're on a highway. You know, it's stressful. Then also when it comes to highways, speed limits are a lot different in Europe. So speed limit on a highway usually is 130 kilometers per hour. But usually in America, the speed limit is on average 65 miles per hour to 75 miles per hour, which is 104 kilometers per hour to 112 kilometers per hour. And so if somebody's going 80 miles down the highway, you think, oh my God, they travel fast. But then when you like convert it to kilometers per hour, you're like, why am I having a heart attack? Literally everybody in Europe drives a lot faster than that. Why am I freaking out? Another huge difference when it comes to traffic is that a lot of cars in America are automatic. Last count, just 3.9% of cars sold were manual. In Europe, usually 80% of cars sold have a manual shift. Uh, that can also be related to the fact that there's a lot more traffic in America. A lot of traffic is stop and go and if you have a manual that would probably just drive you freaking crazy. Also the sizes of cars are a lot different. For example in Europe people usually have smaller cars. There aren't a lot of pickup trucks at all. There are various reasons for that. One being gas prices. In Norway, Netherlands and Italy costs about $7 per gallon. The US is way down on that list with a little below $3 per gallon. So if you have a pickup truck, which in America the most popular one is probably Ford F-150, it would cost you about $120 or $100 to fill the tank and especially parking spots are definitely not for pickup trucks. Last but not least, uh, the electrical sockets are completely different. Uh, even the, the appliances run on different volts than they do in Europe. All right, ladies and gents, we have gone through everything. Why am I talking like this? We have gone through the entire list that I have created. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up because it kind of helps the engagement it convinces youtube that i'm good enough to to push my video a little bit further don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my instagram and tiktok i've been enjoying using that thing for a while now and if you want me to make a video about what americans find weird about europe let me know in the comments down below currently i'm in slovenia obviously that's it stay awesome stay positive i love you all and i'll see you in the next video